that we looked at already. Come, let's see. Um, does anyone have any questions about all these, uh, any of these things? Okay, it's all it's pretty clear. So this gross architecture, everybody can kind of understand that. four types of tissues and everyone you're pretty familiar with this you kind of understand what you're looking at here the osteon um, which part is the osteon which is the um, osteocytes and the lacuna and the lamellae every, and the caniculi everyone kind of understands all that so. um, and then this is spongy bone which is basically the same it just is not um, organized in those uh, you know very uh, it's just not as organized. It's not organized the same way, so it's a little bit different. Okay, so then this is this bone formation. So this intramembranous ossification, mesenchyme, which would be the you know a stem cell precursor stem cell, and then the osteoblast, and then the spongy bone osteocytes, and uh, they grow and enlarge, start in the center, and they just kind of radiate out, and and it works well for us fetally because. And we have these wonderful little gaps in between, and so as we're developing after that, after birth, that first year, our skull can continue to expand with our brain growth, uh, and that is the primary reason. Although um, passage through the birth canal definitely is part of it, um, but I always think really it's that brain growth that drives this process. And then the interchondral, of course, is the formation in in, in, um, in cartilage. And again, we kind of have, we have a mesenchyme the same, but instead of going right into osteoblasts, it, it goes into the chondroblasts and forms in cartilage. And, um, and then we form osteoblasts. And then, differently, we form compact bone first, and then the spongy bone. So it's like an, and then sesamoid. These, don't worry too much about these, but these are um, just these two different types of bones we have. Sesamoid is kind of different. It occurs in the tendons, and it's just where the uh, there's a calcium and, and ossification inside the tendon. Okay, so this is what I just showed you in the piece of frontal bone. Here you saw this diploe, and um, and so we've had this inner and outer table of bone. You know, the outer and inner table, and this is in the cranium. You know, it's not just fetally. I mean, all of us, our craniums are like this. If your cranium has to be healed, it's going to heal through intramembranous ossification. It doesn't switch. It's, that's just the way it's developed. And then this the endochondral. So the bone is shaped in cartilage. And when you take, if you take embryology here, I'm sure you'll learn all about the molecular signaling, and it's pretty fascinating. I mean, I only know enough about all that process to be like, wow, and I don't know that much about it. But of course, so then my question is, well, how did the cartilage form? But uh, another class. Um, and then we get the what they call a little bone collar, which is really just kind of an extra uh, thickness of collagen. And then we begin to get this um, ossification center. And this would be called the primary ossification center. And here's the nutrient artery. And I hope we found a couple of nutrient arteries this week. I hope you kind of looked for them. You won't see them. They're hard to see in the adult bone. Um, but sometimes you do see them. And <coughs> let's see, on the humerus, they're kind of located like right under the tubercles, usually in the lower two thirds, if you can find it. Sometimes they're, it's, you know, as an adult sealed up. So that the blood supply coming in, and then we get this secondary ossification center in the epiphysis on either end. And then those eventually grow together and the bone um, becomes a solid bone. And of course, then there is this articular cartilage always at the end. So periosteum is forming. Now, around the cartilage, we have, um, 
I'll, I'll get to that later. Let me, let me, let me not get you too confused. Okay, so this is just, you know, the simpler process um, is intramembranous. That's really the simplest. And the inter endochondral is just a little bit more complex. complex. Okay, so we're going to look. This is kind of a step-by-step -step of this. Uh, bone formation in intramembranous. And so you can see here is this membrane, these collagen fibers that, that is kind of forming this membrane. And then you have the osteoblast here, and mesenchymal cell. This would be, you know, one of the precursor stem cells that's going to become the um, osteoblast. And then the osteoblasts begin to lay down their matrix just like, uh, like they would, this extracellular matrix. And then pretty soon, they become trapped, and then on the outside then, we have the osteoblasts, which are the cell, cells that will become osteocytes. These are the bone formation cells, osteoblasts. So those are active all the time, form, forming new bone. I mean, even as we're sitting here, you've got new bone forming and bone resorption. I mean, that's just a, that's an ongoing process. So, so you've got these osteoblasts, you have a blood supply, um, remember blood is very, very rich. Um, a couple of my students yesterday said, um, that work as EMTs were saying that if you break a femur, what was it, five pints of blood or something? About three liters, I think. About three liters of blood from a broken femur. So, um, and, um, you know, you could die. That's, so, I mean, I didn't, I knew blood, bones had a lot of blood, but that was kind of a shock to me. So, you know, just to realize how living bone tissue is. So, um, and then we get this uh, spongy bone forming in the osteoblast. And then as it, um, the extracellular forms, then a matrix begins to form and it keeps on forming. And we finally end up with the compact bone and periosteum on the outside um, and then compact bone and spongy bone and development of the periosteum is the kind of final stage. And then here we are. So here's flat bones of the skull. Development. Here's just kind of a step by step again. And this is in your textbook. Um, and it doesn't really go into any more detail than that. So if you have deeper questions like molecularly or what's happening, I, you're kind of be on your own. <laughs> okay, but you might want to investigate. You know, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so then intercondral is this cartilage model replaced by bone. And most bones of the body, and it's a six step process, so it's a little bit more complex. So here we go again, here is this, the perichondrum, that's the word I was looking for. Okay, so, you know, we have periosteum, we also have perichondrium. And that is, so the perichondrium, it does, it's the same thing. It's just this outer layer around the cartilage. And, um, you know, of, of course it's, you know, it's very important, again, I mean, we need this, and this, peri you know, we have an articular cartilage that doesn't, we don't get periosteum on the ends of the bones where they're articulating, that's cartilage, the periosteum is not there. So the periosteum is um, not on articular surfaces, so it's very important to understand. But we do have this cartilage covering on all the articular surfaces. And, um, and so you can see this just regular cell division is happening and with this calcified. So this is like this little bone, this collar. Sometimes it's called kind of a bony collar, but from what I've read, it's really mostly collagen. So it's not like it's, it's bone necessarily. And then we get this formation, we get blood supply in, we get this formation and the growth, can you, it's going both directions. And that's what's kind of important. So it's, it's like <laughs> as if, the center of this bone became ossified and calcified, and then it just grew up and it grew down. Okay, so we have a little baby with a little tiny bone, and how does it get to look like this? Because this is much bigger. So how does it, how do our bones keep growing with us? So they have to not only grow in length, they have to grow in width. And uh, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, here is the, and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So this is the secondary ossification center. Um, you can see this the nutrient artery coming in here, blood supply, um, I think it's called angiogenesis, which is what the process is called. I really, I'm, I'm sure it's, you know, 
know, there's a lot of molecular signaling and all kinds of things that um, I'm not even going to get into. But there's a lot of, uh, so all that is happening, and then the bone is forming, and then we finally end up with um, this ossification center, secondary ossification center, primary ossification center, epithelial line or plate, right here. And then as um, we grow, finally, that closes up completely. However, it's almost always visible on the inside. You'll see a line or a demarcation in the trabecula. So you can almost always still see where it was. It's just no, will no longer be visible on the outside. So this is how that happens. Um, and if you kind of go back to when we talked about the cartilage and remember at the hyaline cartilage, we're looking at the lacunae and we're looking at all the, um, and so here's, so this, let me explain, this is a picture from your book and it's a very good picture, but it's hard to get oriented, to get an orientation. So here we have a femur here, the epithelial plate, the secondary ossification center, <coughs> articulation site, cartilage, this is, this is a knee, right? Here's the tibia, secondary ossification center. And so then this is all the meniscus. Your knees are full of a lot of other structures. Meniscus, cartilage, there's very, uh, we'll talk about that when we talk about joints, they're very involved. So, so what, and what they're showing you here is a little square right here. So it's kind of upside down to how we want it to be. So we have this zone of resting cartilage and then we have this prolific, so then this is cartilage that you can see it's hyaline cartilage in the little lacunae. And then it's, so it's not, it's not doing anything. It's just there. And then we have the cartilage beginning to proliferate. The cells are dividing and it's proliferating. And as it's proliferating, they kind of have, they form, can you see how it's kind of random and then slowly it's forming these columns. So it begins to form these columns and then it begins to calcify, and this has been the bone. So, I mean, just kind of grossly, meaning <coughs> big structure, no, not too detailed here, but um, this is kind of what is happening. And so you're gonna have this, this process, so this bone, you know, would be here, and then you're seeing this resting cartilage, right, on that end, right kind of in that, this resting cartilage would be here. Now, if we move this other direction, then we would get into that secondary ossification center. Everyone kind of understand how that happens? Okay. Um, let me see. Yeah. Okay. And this is the process for our long bones. Okay, so what, okay, so now, the other name for the process that we just looked at, there are two names, it can be called Interstitial or endogenous. Endogenous. So interstitial, meaning in, within the cell, in, inside the cells, inside the inside, and the interstitial space is the space kind of between the cells inside the bone or in the cartilage at this point. And endogenous, meaning it's forming from within. So this is within. Okay. Now contrast that. Okay, so that is how bones get longer. So we have this little tiny bone, and it's got to get longer. But it also has to get quite a bit wider. Um, so that process. Um, okay, I'll tell you in a second. Okay, so it grows in length by mitos my mitosis and this extracellular nature. So in thickness, the, when our bones grow in thickness, that bo bone growth comes from the outside. It comes from the periphery. <coughs> of more, it's due to the addition of more extracellular matrix on the periphery of the bone. And um, that is called oppositional. Um, a positional 
the other word for this is um, exogenous, meaning from without. So to grow from the outs to grow in thickness, it all comes from the outside. So remember the periosteum. So we've got this periosteum that's around the bone. And the periosteum has these little periosteal arteries. And now they're very tiny, you know, very, very, very tiny. <laughs> um, and as the bone is forming here, they they kind of fall, these arteries are kind of located in these grooves. And as the bone is forming, it wraps itself around that artery. So it, and then, can you see now that this artery is now becoming a central, um, is becoming the you know central canal or the haversian canal. So now you're getting this artery down the center <coughs> here, central haversian canal, and here's another one forming. So you can see here's the periosteal ridges, and inside are these periosteal blood vessels. Um, and we have these, so here's a perforating canal that's forming. The perforating canals are the canals that um, go across from the central canal. So you can think of the central canals as coming straight down, and then the perforating canals go across. And the other word for perfor uh, perforating is the Volksmann's Canal. It's kind of an old term, but um, sometimes you'll see that listed. And then it, this bone, this matrix is, still being laid down, traps the, periosteal, traps the um, periosteal artery, and then the osteoblast and the endosteum build new concentric um, lamellae, and, um, and then we have, now we have an osteon, this brand new osteon here, with a central canal with blood vessel, and here's another one for me. So does that make sense to everybody? So it's kind of interesting, I think, you know, how, you know how the bone grows like this okay now um, so okay so now we have this bigger bone but where's the med what happened to the medullary cavity did the medullary cavity stay really tiny no it's got to it's got to keep up with the bone growth here and so what happens here is the enlargement is you know happens by osteoblasts and um, osteoclasts uh, so the osteoclasts are destroying the bone or resorbing the bone, and then the osteoblasts are forming, you know, like we just saw, this appositional growth, and then the medullary cavity is keeping up in, uh, keeping the bone at a consistent thickness. Does this make sense? Okay. Does the bone grow in length first or in width? You know, that's a really good question. I think it kind of grows both. And it grows in both ways all the time because um, if you look at the fetal skeleton, I mean the bones, you know, they just look like little tooth kits. But um, just look, we have three of them in our lab, and they're of different ages and they're a little bit different sizes. So, you know, it's not like we're all born with these little skinny legs, you know, and they get bigger. <laughs> so I think it's just kind of this constant bone growth is what's happening. You're growing bigger, thicker all the time, and um, you know when we um, our bones are always responding to us. And it's a very, it's, I think, probably one of the most dynamic tissues of the body are our bones. Okay, so again, here's the four cells that are responsible for all of this. And, um, you know, I do want you to really, I want you to really understand these cells and, you know, their process of bone formation. Are the osteogenic cell? So this would be osteogenic. This would be the stem cell, the precursor stem cell. This would have uh, derived from mesenchyme, but now it's become an osteogenic cell. So the stem cells, the stem cell and the mesenchyme and signal was signaled to become bone. And, um, and then that becomes the osteoblast, which starts secreting this matrix, um, collagen, calcium phosphate, and I don't know, a bunch of cal calcium minerals. <laughs> 
and, and then um, it becomes an osteocyte, which is mature inside the cell, inside the bone. It's communicating with all, the, it's all connected with all the other cells. So this bone is not, this osteocyte is, even though it's trapped itself, it's got its, you know, feel it's linking hands. You know, it's all connected to all the other cells via these little caniculi. And then the osteoclast, which is multinucleated, because when this osteoclast formed, it was a, and I wish I had more information on that, but I don't, but it is um, numerous cells come together to form the osteoclast, which is why we, it is multinucleated. I mean, that's the take home message of the osteoclast, multinucleated, ruffled border. Any questions? Okay, so, and um, I do want us to, I want to see, I want you to see that uh, another film from Amgen that we saw kind of on Tuesday uh, that will kind of, just to drive this home, just to give you the visual, it's kind of repetitive of what we just talked about, but I think getting that visual, uh, seeing those, I do, and I, so it's a beautiful animation to see these cells building the bone. I mean, I just think it's really important. And then we'll talk about fracture repair, too. Like, how do fractures get repaired? Because you've got to repair the fracture. It's the same kind of thing. So um, <clears throat> bone growth and maintenance, calcium, phosphorus, salt, vitamins, uh, hormones. These are some of the hormones that are um, do have a role to play in um, our bone growth. Growth hormone, uh, calcitonin. Uh, this is the one that becomes um, that is re uh, responds to estrogen, which is why females, as they um, reach menopause and no longer have estrogen, they have an increase in osteoclast activity, decrease in osteoblast activity, and that's where you get the osteoporosis. We'll talk. We'll show. I'll show you some pictures of that. And then, and it also they're also involved in the parathyroid hormone. It's also part of that um, estrogen cycle. And then, of course, these are the sex hormones. I mean, um, you know, the ovaries is estrogen and testes, testosterone. Testosterone causes extra bone growth. I mean, it's the muscles. And, I mean, uh, males don't have the problem um, with osteoporosis as women do. Not that they couldn't get it. They could have it. Um, in fact, I heard something on the news. I, I, I didn't investigate it. But there was some, a woman who drank, I want to say like 10 liters of Coca-Cola a day, and she died. But before she died, she lost all her teeth, and um, I mean, you can only imagine what, I mean, so, <laughs> that's, that, I, I, I need to probably investigate that story, because it's probably really interesting to learn what happened to her, and, and it's really sad that she died, and that it's from drinking Coca-Cola, but, it, it, you know, I think we all know that, you know, uh, you know what we eat forms, our body's not made out of air, it's made out of what you put inside of it, so, anyway. Um, so this is a picture of an, os an osteoporotic bone, and you can see that it's just the destruction of the bone has outpaced, so we have more osteoclast activity than we have osteoblast activity, and so you end up with this very porous bone that breaks. And Paget's disease is um, somewhat similar in the process. The bones become very brittle. I think Paget's disease, sometimes you get an overgrowth of bone, but it still becomes very brittle. And, um, and I just kind of talked about this. What do they say? They say for women, uh, when you reach the 